I have really used kind of as an anchor for my faith and just in my life. And this is because um, several years ago I lost my dad and my best friend both to cancer. And so suddenly it's like I just needed this to be true more than I did before. And after asking a lot of questions of like, oh gosh, well, where are they now? And how close can they get? And can they still talk to me? Um, I still don't have a lot of answers, but I have had several really beautiful experiences that have just led me to believe that I think they are so much closer than any of us ever think. And I want to share one of these experiences with you. Um, this was about a year and a half ago. I was searching for something online and I came across an article by accident that said, it was titled actually, Why Lindsey Sterling is a Terrible Violinist. <laughs> so just like any mature adult, I clicked on it and I proceeded to read the whole article and then I read through all the comments and they were all just talking about my violin, the way I hold it, the way I play, my intonation, my my uh, tone, just everything in the way I play and how bad the violin is in my hands. And um, it really cut deep, it really hurt. And so finally after it spent way too long reading all of these comments, I finally was like, oh, I need to go outside. I need to get a break and clear my head. And so I took my little dog Luna and we went skipping down the street. And uh, <laughs> I ran into a neighbor actually quite a ways up the road um, and he's a man that I've talked to a few times, but on this day, he stopped me and he said, you know what, you're really good at what you do. I said, well, thank you. And to be honest, I didn't even know that he knew what I did. But then I, I started to continue to walk again and he said, calling after me, he goes, and you know what? It's not about the violin. He said, what you do is magic. And I was so taken back in this moment because just everything about it was so familiar to me. The way his voice inflection said this, the phrase, the word choice he used, even down to the way he got this crooked little smile and his eyes sparkled as he said it. My dad had this crooked little smile and his eyes would twinkle when he had something that he was so excited to share. And in that moment, it literally felt like my dad was talking to me. You know, and I, I can't call my dad anymore and ask him for comfort or advice. But I do really strongly believe that we all have angels that are watching out for us and that are trying to send us messages of comfort and hope and make us realize that we're never alone. And I really think that they will speak to us in the language that we can understand in order to get us these messages and whether we realize it's from them or not. Because I think those messages come through other people's words. I think they come through feelings, through signs, or any way that they can get to us. And so because of that story and many other little moments like it, I believe that we all have angels around us all the time.